amount of stuff or that's uh, you know, creating the gaps across the board. And I think especially for the one of those places where you can talk about what they want to do shows up there, not necessarily closer, you know, there's, there's probably less thinking involved. Um, you know, especially when you guys you got like these big guards like we do. Um, you know, a young guy like Bo Stevens, who's you know going to be an awesome player, but is, is just young right now, and um, you know that can play to his strength sometimes. Is just go hit the guy that shows up. Um, aside from that, you know, it's a question for the head coach and <laughs> Brian. Yeah, that's yeah, thanks. I try my best. <laughs> that's a good answer. I mean, I haven't seen you throw one yet. But, uh, you know, you don't look like a Wisconsin lineman. Yeah, right. <laughs> The running game is showing life. I mean, how much better does that make everything for you guys? Because it seems like when you guys can run, you're just a different team. Yeah, I think um, you know, that's that's where our offense is is uh, it's where it starts is with the run game, and um, you know, a lot of what we do is is based on you know first being able to run the ball effectively, and uh, you know I, I would agree it's great to see the, the running game taking some steps and seeing some improvement. And, um, you know, just getting those three backs we have started because they're they're all pretty talented. So. Um, yeah, it was great. It was great, and just got to keep keep that going. They all seem unique too. They all seem to have their own style too. They kind of complement. Do you see that too? Yeah, yeah. You know, you got um, you know Lashawn, who's just you know, he's a quick guy, but he's also really tough. And, mm -hmm. and Gavin, who seems to be pretty patient and you know hit the hole hard, and also tough. And Caleb, a really hard runner that uh, is also physical, but has some pretty pretty awesome top end speed too. Mm -hmm. So you know, definitely they're all unique. Um, and they all run really well in our system. You look at their pass rush. How, you, you, nobody, just like you guys, can't replace. What's kind of How have they been able to get into the back? Yeah, you know, I think with a team like this, um, you know, although you can't replace those guys, they still have really talented defensive linemen, and um, you know, a lot of the pressures they'll bring on third down. You know, they're trying to get one on ones across the board, which which you know most teams do, um, but. You know, really, that should be to me. That's a that's a almost a call to arms for our offensive line, right? Like it's they're saying that they want to get a one on one and that they're going to win one of them. Um, so you know, what a what an opportunity for our line to um, be able to you know take that and, and to, to still execute. And um, you know, for me, it's it's there are going to be some pressures that are going to be issues and getting the ball to my hand, you know, fast being able to identify it. Uh, you know, as much as you can pre snap and seeing a post snap and trying to get the ball out if. If need be, but um, yeah, you know you can't over, don't want to over respect anyone, um, but give them the respect that they deserve and, and uh, execute. The hit that you took um, in Indy was about as hard as I've seen a quarterback hit, but, <laughs> Diana, uh, and I know yeah. you felt it for about a month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it, what do you recall of the play before the pain? I guess you know just. Yeah, it was um, it was a scramble on. Third down, we got called back for holding. Um, you know, I don't recall much. I remember just – it's always tough because it's like, you know, you're hurt, but you don't you don't want to come out if you're hurt and just injured. It's kind of a tough one. Um, tried to stick it out, but wasn't really able to throw the ball effectively uh, after it. But, um, yeah, I just remember being in pain. I remember Lindy being the first one there and helped me up, you know. But I remember being an idiot too. I got a slide, you know. I'd, be con convicted with my slide helps because I did a half-ass slide and he's able to get a hit on me. Uh, it's it's not a good deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you are showing a little bit more of your wheels. Um, you have yeah, been. I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is that uh, a couple pounds off in the off season helping you? Yeah, out? I think so. I think so. I think I'm a little bit faster, a little more explosive. Um, and I'm, you know, it helps helps uh, you know able to move the chains against uh, Iowa State on one of them, and then. Um, you know, being able to get out of the pocket when stuff breaks down is, is, is helpful. You know, I don't want to take any sacks that are un, unneeded. So, um, you know, continue to work on that best I can. Is that something that, like, you emphasize, or is it just been a matter of you've gotten these circumstances to run a little more this season? No, I don't. I mean, I don't. I never want to run. That's not, that's not uh, my job, and it's not my strong suit. But um, I also don't want to, I don't want to take unnecessary sacks uh, if I can help it. Um, you know whether that be, uh, you know, you know, field position is critical, especially in Big Ten plays. So just want to try to avoid sacks. Um, and if they cover cover our guys well or, or whatever, then they're trying to get out of the pocket, and make something happen. You think about the 
struggles on third down last Saturday, a lot of it was you get into a third and long because of a negative play on the first down or a holding or something like that. Is it as simple as if we do our job, we're not going to find ourselves in that situation, and if we don't, then we will, or is it something maybe deeper than that? Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, our, our goal all the time is to eliminate any 15 yard or five yard penalty because 15 yards is usually a stupid penalty, right? Like you personal foul or something like that. A five yard is that's all false start or lining up wrong or, or, or you know whatever it may be. Those, those are those are too easy to to eliminate to, to really have happen. You know I'd say we're, we've got to be more disciplined than that. Um, Ten yard penalties are going to happen. You know holding like if if our line is playing as physical as that they need to be, um, then we're going to get some holding calls here and there. And same with the guys outside. You know if they're trying to finish guys uh, on run run plays. You know the receivers then. We're going to get a holding call here and there. Um, so the 10-yard penalties, you know, we'll live with those. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, for the most part, got to stay in front of the sticks. You know, negative plays really, really hurt a, you know a team's chance of advancing and, and scoring. Uh, you know, I'm not sure on the exact number, but there's a pretty um, statistically there's a huge contrast between drives with no negative plays and drives with negative plays, just in terms of if you're going to score. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we still need to execute better on third down because, um, you know, we do have good answers. And, uh, you know, third and 15, it's, it's going to be tough. But the third and eights, third and nines, you know, we still, have a, we still have a good chance there if we just execute. How much of an emphasis is, you talk about eliminating those mental mistakes and those penalties, how much of that is a focus maybe in season versus fall camp or spring practice where you have more time to, to kind of focus on all those fundamental things? Yeah, you know, I think, you know, it's really in season because, you know, with the five yard stuff, um, like, you know, we got a, you know, Brody lined up off, or, you know, he signaled on the ball, but there was miscommunication between him and the ref. And, and it's it's one of those things where he's a young guy, you know, really his third game, um, really, what was it? It was like a second game really playing. So it's kind of expected, but at the same time, it's like if you're out there, you know, we need to, we need to be lined up. And, you know, Brody's going to learn from that. They're all going to learn from that. Um, but it's just, it's having that, you know that focus when you're really in the, the heat of battle when the bolts are flying that you know you still got to still we still got to line up legally you know we still got to you know get off on the count you know can't jump it whatever whatever it is um, but you know a lot of that's just kind of heat of the moment losing focus briefly and you know just can't happen though speaking on Brody even uh, Nico and others whether you threw to him or not against Rutgers, when you go back and look at the tape, did you see that they're maybe more better conditioned, that they're running sharper routes? Did you see kind of like that growth um, in the in receivers that you can utilize moving forward? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think, um, you know, really with, with Nico specifically, the biggest thing with him is just getting back to, you know, full go, back to 100 or as close to 100% as he can. And, and I definitely think he, you know, took a step. Um, you know, he missed, he missed a good amount of time. You know, he, he broke his foot, so it's kind of just – Getting him back in the rhythm of it, but um, he looked good. You know, aside from that one where he slipped, um, you know, he, he looked good on tape. And uh, same with Brody; they all, they're all improving. They're all improving. They're all going to keep getting better each week. And um, you know, the trick is just pulling it all together. Yeah, but definitely some growth there. Seven yards here, to the sideline. Fifteen yards here, and you've got to be here. Um, you know, how difficult is that? Especially remember, because you were playing as a true freshman, special teams mostly, uh -huh. and then to get to where you are today, and probably knowing it. Oh well uh, yeah, uh, it's definitely it's definitely hard, especially not really having a strong football background. You know, I really didn't even know the dimensions of the field. You know, and that's the question Coach Parker kind of asked me the first time we met. I was like, Coach, I don't know how you think I I know this. I barely, you feel me? I know a court is ninety four feet. That's about <laughs> it. That's about all I know. But, um, but I think you know, just over time, you know, you you kind of start to realize. And Coach Parker says this a lot. It's a game of inches. You know, if you're off by a yard, if you're off by two yards, that's the difference between a first down or or a PBU, or that's the difference between a PBU and a pick. So I think just understanding where you're at on the field and understanding their alignments, understanding you know the down and distance, understanding the situation on the field, where they're at on the field. I think all that plays an impact, especially playing the, playing a zone defense as, as Coach Parker plays uh, that 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 zone matchup man kind of kind of concept. Uh, I think you you know you really have to understand all of that. You you have to understand what they're trying to attack you with. Um understanding what Coach Parker is thinking, especially as a safety, you have to kind of have to understand where he's at mentally and what he's thinking about and kind of relaying that, you know, to, to the corners, to, you know, having the under, the linebackers understanding what what they have to do and then you, you know, kind of playing your job and your position. So all of that definitely plays a factor. And I think it takes time to learn, especially with our defense, The the um, as thick as our playbook is, you know, you kind of really have to understand all of that to, to really be successful on the field.
you know, one of the things also is you guys are are will, are able to, to run just four up, up front. You're not necessarily having to blitz, but you don't ever put eight in the box mm-hmm. except if something's either going bad or you're in a goal line or short yard situation. Mm-hmm. How effective do you think that makes you as a secondary when it comes to defending the pass and in those situations where you're only getting four guys up front and dropping seven? Yeah, I think it helps out a lot, especially, you know, I think we all do a good job of, of reading our run pass reads. You know what I mean? I think, you know, as a, as a safety, I think, you know, I have to make sure I'm always sound in, in what I'm reading. You know, the corners, they have a little bit more leeway. You know, they're kind of a pass first player. But I think the linebackers and, and, and the safeties, you know, they, we have to do a really good job of making sure that our eyes are always in the right spot. And I think, you know, playing that, having that zone concept uh, that, that Coach Parker has, you always have to make sure, you know, you're able to read your run pass reads because the faster you can do that, the faster you know what's going on, the faster you can get to the ball and the faster you can play the pass. So I think, you know, all that, you know, with experience, with time, I think you see that, you know, when you have guys as me, Jack, Seth, you know, I think, you know, the way we're able to read the game, I think we, we read at a pretty pretty high level, a pretty, pretty fast pace. So I think that also helps a lot when you have older guys on, on the field that can, you know, that can help you out a little bit. What's the difference yeah. between McCarthy and uh, – Back to their the quarterback last year and this one this year. I think they're both. I think they're 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 both. I don't really think there's any huge difference. I think you know their offense is, is really well balanced. I think they're both they're both really good quarterbacks who could put the ball where they where they need to be. I think they have good receivers that can help them out a little bit. You know when you have you know athletic, tall, you know fast receiver, you know you really don't have to. I don't want to say they're not accurate, but you can you can have a little bit of leeway with with the passes that you make. And I think you know their run game helps a lot helps them out a lot as well. You know when you had they had. Uh, what was his name? Twenty five. I can't can't think of his name right now. Yeah, ha- Haskins. Haskins. When you had Haskins and you had Quorum in the backfield, you know that the run game uh, that opens up a lot. So I think you know you know their their offense is, is always from from what I've seen. You know they're well balanced. You know in the run game and the pass game. So you always have to be sound in what you're doing. And when you have a good quarterback, you know who can put the ball in money. You know it helps you out too. Harbaugh said, uh, "Kinnick Stadium is where top five teams go to die." Mm-hmm. What do you think of that? I think that's the truth. I think you, I, I think I saw a, a picture on, I think it's Twitter. I think we've won the past six, six, seven games when we've had a top five opponent in Kinnick t- Stadium. So I think, you know, just, just the energy that I think we have as a team and the energy that the, that the crowd brings, you know, it hypes us up a little bit, a lot. And then, you know, a lot of teams can't really take that. I don't want to say can't really handle that, but the, but that ap- atmosphere is definitely different. If you're not experienced, if you're not you know under under control, if you know if you're kind of get, getting frazz- frizzled or frazzled a little bit, you know that might throw you off your game a lot. So I think you know if you if you if you come into Kinnick Stadium unprepared and unready for what's about to happen, then you'll definitely go down to die. You talk a lot about how you know you, you were lightly recruited. What, what do these top five games mean to you when you get to play? I mean, you know. Not many people wanted you out of high school. That doesn't really affect me because I, you know, I, I understand. You know, coming out of high school, I, I played basketball. I, I wasn't a football player, so these schools not looking at me. It doesn't, it do, doesn't really affect me. But I know I understand that. You know, I have to go out there and play the best of my ability. I'm playing some really good. I think, you know, I, I regard myself. You know, if I was to play football, I think I would have been a four, a four star athlete. I think I would have been a, a, a top recruited player. So I, I always regard myself as, as being equals to, to the players I, I'm playing, equal or better than the players I'm playing. So. Uh, I think just the opportunity to go out there and play a tough opponent such as Michigan is is always something that I look forward to. No matter no matter actually no matter who I'm playing, I always look forward to just having an opportunity to go out there and play football. What kind of call? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, I think just I mean, just the love for Iowa football and realizing that it's a process. You know, I mean, you're not always just going to walk in the front door as a freshman and get right out there on the field, but just your drive to continually improve and just create that investment and help out, you know, the older guys for what you can as a young guy. And just, you'll know that the opportunity will come about and just the investment you make will have you ready for that scenario when it comes up. That opportunity did come. What's going through the mind at that point? Just time to step up. I mean, the thought process really didn't change a lot just because, you know, if you're first guy, first string guy, second string guy, third string guy, you're just, you gotta be invested like a starter. And that's kind of how the linebacker room is operated and the program as a whole. Just the next man in mentality is, you know, the standard is the standard. So, you know, if you're a second string guy that gets thrown in there with the with the ones, then, you know, that standard is expected to be kept. What have you seen from Michigan this weekend? Yeah, very good team. They obviously a lot of good players. I think we're very excited to uh, just get out there and show the improvements that we've been making from day to day, week to week. Does last year's loss, I guess, lean on this team a little bit? Do you guys think about that at all, or, or how does that work? 
Um, yeah, I mean, looking at last year, there's definitely some things that um, we could have changed in that game. And so I think we're just excited to, you know, show up this week and show those changes that we've made and, you know, how we're just going to come out and compete to the best of our ability. What does it mean to have an AP Top 5 team in Kinnick again for the second straight year? Yeah, it's a great opportunity to just come out and compete and just at the highest level, Big Ten opponent. I mean, it's it's an amazing opportunity to show what we can do. Yeah, I mean, they have a good offense line. They've got some pretty really solid tight ends, and they've got a good back um, in quorum. So I think that's just kind of, you know, how they operate and everything. I think we're really, you know, excited to, to show how we're going to match up with them. So You like that challenge? You guys pride yourself on stopping the run. Yeah, I mean, we we love that challenge. I mean, every week is presents a new challenge for us. So I think we're we're very excited every single week with every single opponent um, to show how we can match up and compete. Um, what we can do as a team. So uh, that's mainly been our focus this week. Not really, you know, we look at the tape from last year and realize what, what happened, what went wrong and what we could do better. But other than that, you know, it's, it's a new year. It's a new week. It's a new team. And last week, what, from your perspective, how did the running game improve so much? I know Rutgers was, you know, a highly touted yep. run defense. Well, I think first it just um, comes back to us and just, you know, working during the week, trying to get better. Um, you know, the first three games that we had, uh, looking back at that film and um, seeing what went wrong and what we did right, and then really just focusing on that. And then going to this game plan, I think we had a good game plan put together for Rutgers. Um, and I think we executed that game plan, and then they showed on really game day. Uh, yeah. And then, as a fullback, do you? It seems from an outside perspective that like the Michigan Iowa games are kind of a clashing of styles. You know, yeah. Hard nosed run game with fullbacks in Iowa. And then yeah. Michigan just throwing it all over the yard. Do you kind of feel that, or is that something the media is just great? I don't know. I mean, I don't really pay much attention to Michigan's offense, obviously, but um, I know I can tell you from an uh, offensive standpoint, looking at their defense, they're a really physical defense. You know, we pride ourselves on being a physical offense, so it should be a good matchup there. And then, yeah, like I said, I don't really, I'm not really sure about their offense. And how much do you know about, you know, big new kickoff? I know it was here last, last year for Penn State. Is there any added, you know, motivation or juice there? Um, you know, it, yeah, like you said, they're, they're here last year. I mean, it's cool. Um, you know, get a lot of fans in town, and uh, you know, obviously we'll have Kinnick sold out again. So, you know, it's going to be a great atmosphere. That's why we came here to play big games like this. So, I'm just really excited for that. Well, it's just day to day. I I have I have a line they call it. So the yard line that we need to get the ball to to kick, and usually I determine that before the game, based off wind and other things like that. Do you think 55? Do you feel confident going? Usually, there? usually I like to set my baseline at 55. Okay. And, Go from there. I apologize if you were asked this before, but you know the history of Iowa field goal kickers against Michigan? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I've seen that video probably a hundred times this week. <laughs> well, what, do, what do you think about going into uh, the big game this week in that regard? I mean, as a kicker, that's what you hope for. Win the game for your team like that. Mm -hmm. Can you picture it? Can you visualize it? You hit the last second field goal and you get stolen by 70,000 people? Every day. <laughs> How much of what you guys do is mental to success on the field? You know, obviously, you have the physical stuff, but how much of it is in your mind? Uh, me as a kicker or like the whole team? For you, for you as a kicker. For me, mental is probably the majority of it. Really? Like where your mind's at, that, that usually determines the outcome. How much different is that? Because you can practice inside and even on the practice field as much as you want, but it has to be a little different when you have 70,000 people watching. I mean, it is, but at the same time, it's like you don't understand anything that people are saying, and like, mm -hmm. you, it's just it's just loud noise like in the background, like versus versus like say high school, you can like you know the people in the stands and you can hear what they're saying sometimes. <laughs> and out there, it's just loud blurs. Like even even at Rutgers, it was just like behind the goalpost, just like screaming. I'm like, yeah, I don't hear anything. It's just loud noise. <laughs> What's it like for you? Because you grew up as a Hawkeye fan, right? Yes. Well, my mom was a huge Hawkeye fan. So, yeah, TV is always on. Is she from here? How'd that come to she, be? She's from here, actually. Okay. Uh, my parents met at Iowa State, actually. But my mom only went there because she got uh, 
she got a scholarship to play or go to Iowa State. Where's she from originally? Uh, Salt Lake. Oh, okay. So what's it been like getting to do all of this for the team that you grew up watching? I mean, you get here and you look on TV and you're like, wow, I can't imagine myself being there. And then you're here and you're like, oh, wow, I can, I can do this. I, I, I can handle this. Anything you're still particularly trying to work on or tweak looking ahead? Um, well, I mean, I like to say how I've been performing is good. So I, I guess the one critique I'd have is I'd like to keep doing what I'm doing, like see how well Logan I can replicate my, I'd say, Logan's only got about 10 minutes. If anybody wants to talk to him. Hey, Drew, hey, Drew um, maybe you've been asked about this. I'm just looping in, but... Um, you had the same kicking coach as Keith, right? Yes. How, how has that training helped you? And did you watch a lot of Keith, I assume, uh, in your days? Uh, yes. So I said earlier, he, we have like the same like base baseline form. I mean, every kicker is different, of course, but there's some that are way more similar than others. And us coming from the same coach, that coach teaches like the same like basic fundamental principles. So say I'm struggling with something, it'd be a, it'd be very beneficial to go to Keith because he would know where I'm coming from. Yeah, I think that was a great So your style, you would say your style mimics his? Some, yes, some yes. Uh, so I don't know if you noticed, but like when I put my hand out and the arm up, I mean, Keith didn't like the hand, but he'd always have this arm like kind of tucked like this. It, it keeps your chest straight. And that was a big problem I had in spring ball. So. Oh, really? Yeah. When did you make that tweet? Did you make that tweet? Uh, so or? after spring ball, I went home for a little bit. And that's my coach. My okay. coach is at Charlotte, which is about two and a half hours away from my house. Mm -hmm. And I was training with him. And then he eventually made me put the hand out, which quieted my shoulders. It would make the ball essentially go straighter mm -hmm. or narrow the gap between a kick here versus a kick here. Oh, that's interesting. Though. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Uh, how did that help you on the 51 yarder? He actually, that coach sent me plan for adrenaline. So what he means by that is like when you have adrenaline, you tend to swing a lot harder. And when I would swing harder, he's seen it in warmups. The ball tends to like go left, which it, it did in that game. So like, I guess if he didn't remind me of that, I might've missed left, but uh, I went out there and I was calm and composed. I had hit like a 50, 57 or 58 in warmups. So I knew I could get it there like easily. So I kind of swung easy. It still went left, of course, as you saw, but went in <laughs> and, and they can really you know come off the ball hard and so we got to get, get into them separate um and try to get off these blocks so how much does last year kind of with you guys going into this week uh yeah i mean last year was last year but we're de we definitely like we're, we're looking at plays from last year's game where they they hurt us uh and we're trying to to sure those things up and tighten those up so definitely important Yeah, he's got great feet. He can make people miss. He can break tackles. Um, so it's going to be important to, you know, get 11 hats to the football and, and gang tackle this guy because he's really good. As an athlete, you know, these top five games, you know, opponents in front of your home crowd, does this get your blood pumping a little bit more in these weeks? Yeah, I mean, we treat every game the same. But, I mean, these are definitely games you think of when you're, like, dreaming as a kid, like, I want to go play college football. These are the type of atmospheres you want to go play in. So it's going to be a great opportunity for us, and uh, we're really excited.